Hello and welcome to our podcast, The Global Smart Cities. Today, our guest is Mr. David Henry, the CEO of Musk City. Hello, Mr. David. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're so happy for having you today with us. Very pleased to be here. As we are here in the global uh, smart cities uh, and your theme for a better life, uh, how do you think uh, Musk City interact with this theme? Um, so smart cities and new cities around the world should go hand in hand. So the, the technology globally and what the youth, which will make up most of the new cities use, is they use technology, which is the mobile phone. So the smart city is a uh, it's assistance to how people live. So the livability in the new cities is driven a lot by smart cities. So, you know, wireless technology, uh, activation of uh, traffic signalization, uh, sustainability component of smart cities are all components for a better life. Um, and it's they're really pieces of infrastructure that, that help, in our case, Miss City, the young families um, that will move there eventually to make it easier and uh, safer and more affordable to live. Uh, so it's, that's the smart city. You integrate it in your master plan. So can you tell us um, about the educational aspect of uh, Musk City and why was it important to visit Musk as a place uh, for academy? So um, education, as I say, is the cornerstone of future populations all over the world. And the other buzzword is lifelong learning. So he, he, he established Miss Schools in 2016 as one of the first call it businesses of the foundation, passionate about education of the youth. Um, so, so the school became uh, the cornerstone of the first project that opened last year. And then subsequent to that, you look at lifelong learning, you start at childcare, which is, you know, six months through to still study to your 90. So we have Miss Schools opened. We have two more schools under construction. We have... Um, third-party academies such as Cordon Bleu uh, delivering the culinary school. So the, the, the city is driven around as one of the pillars, education. Um, and you can't get anywhere in this world without being educated. And exactly. the youth, particularly the Saudi youth, continually want to educate. The number of extra courses they do, MBAs, um, just upskilling themselves because it's the opportunity to make a difference in the world. So education was the key pillar. So what are some benefits of operating as a non-profit uh, city? Well, to be a non-profit city, you're private. Yeah. So we have nothing to do with uh, listed companies. We, we're not part of the PIF mega, you know, giga project. You have a corporate governance, which is, again, made up of a separate board. You have a different business model in advancement of youth, in empowering women. So what was the inspiration behind the idea of the City Hub? Uh, and how did it come uh, about? The City Hub um, started off, it was, a, it was a disused medical warehouse in the adjoining suburb, but it sat on the land. So the foundation bought the building. We, in 2019, did what's called a dilapidation survey. So you survey the building, it was two too strong to knock it over. So we decided to refurbish it. So we took out all the old services, it's probably 40 years old, um, put all new services in, put some what they call second mezzanine floors in and we moved our office from downtown Riyadh to the site. Um, and then it started to say, well, we need a, uh, like an event space for the foundation's um, pillars, which is entrepreneurship and community, to hold events. So we then turned it into an event space um, and we have a regular calendar. We launched uh, fashion for, for the Fashion Commission. We do accelerator programs, we do boot camps um, and we've, we've also opened a test kitchen with the Culinary Commission. We've opened a product development studio with the Fashion Commission. So it's now become the centre of the uh, activation of the city until we open the full city in late 25. So we had the school open, but the city hub was just an opportunity to sustainably redevelop an existing building, which made sense from day one. And now it's just thousands of people come through with events. It's just, it's fantastic. 
So what advice would you give an organization uh, following a similar route? As I said, I think it's you, it, you will find it very difficult to find another foundation in the world wanting to build a city. Um, it's very important to listen to your consumer base, which are basically going to be the youth. As I said, I'm amazed at where the young Saudis have worked for me, where they see their future, what they want for their future. Um, so listen to your consumers. Think about education and particularly in this country, think about a different lifestyle that's not driven around the car, the motor vehicle. So we've put our parks in early, but it's very important to set up what I call the soft infrastructure before the people or the employees move into the city, whether it's Riyadh, whether it's outside Los Angeles or a new town outside Tokyo, same thing. Your consumers will be young people. Yep. So listen to them. They really know what they want and they, they, they're they afraid of where the future is with climate change and everything that's going on. So if you can give them a sense of belonging in a community, it's a big tick, day one. So, uh, um, Mr. Henry, uh, as we are here in the uh, Global uh, uh, Smart Cities Forum, uh, where all uh, governments, leaders, uh, companies and technology are here in Riyadh, the kingdom, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, uh, how do you see uh, this kind of forum and how it helps uh, to process uh, smart cities? Yeah. Well, I think having, having it based here and with all the appropriate government entities here. It's, 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 a, it's a matter of connecting. And you only get to connect in a lot of these places when you come to these types of forums. And you've got so many projects going on in the kingdom. It's appropriate to have it here. And, and every project has a smart city agenda, whether it's Kadia, Red Sea, Neom, Dariagate, mm. Sports Boulevard, us, all the new projects. So everyone learns from each other. As I said, we we, we would probably be the first project to open of all the projects in Rio to have people move into, into a new project that's considered one of the top ten. So it's a learning. It's, you know, you use it as a test bed. There's, I mean, we had people from uh, Korea and Barcelona which are well advanced in smart city, right? Mm. So they, you bring them here, learn. Technology changes so rapidly, as you know, with the little mobile phone, with AI and chat and all these new things, GP chat. It's, this is the right place to do it. Yeah. Mr. David Henry, thank you so much for your time. And we were so happy for having you here with us today. Pleasure. Thank you for watching our episode with Mr. David Henry, the CEO of Musk City. And see you in the next episode.